episode of me, Mike Self, and I, and I am Mike Bencourt. Okay, that's too loud. That is too loud. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another exciting episode of me, Mike Self, and I. I am Mike Bencourt. You're listening to Ochenta Seis Eighty Six. And I hope all is well with you. If you're wondering why I sound so crystal clear, why it sounds perfect, because me, myself, and I is here at 101.5 K-Hit Studio. Can you believe it? Yes, you can, because I begged them, I've asked them, and I said, please let me record here. Please let me record here. And they said, finally, Mike, all right, we will have you record here, and that's why you're here. At K-Hits. So thank you so much from the great people of K-Hits for having me record Me, Myself, and I podcast. And it's a great day because I'm here. And not only that, I brought in a very special guest. I wanted to save him for episode 100, but you know what? When you go to 101.5 K-Hits, and this is the very first time performing here, I got to invite someone else. And I brought in the big guns. I brought in my friend. If First of all, if you like the podcast art, this is the reason why. If you like my headshots, he's the reason why. Ladies and gentlemen, Emma Mikers, please welcome my friend, your friend, Mr. Nick Larson. Hello. Michael, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Yeah. Dude, I wanted to save you for episode 100. I really did, but you know what? This is important. What episode is this? 86. 86? Oh, oh you know what would have been great? You know what would have been great? If this was episode 101. 101. And 101. 101. Uh, right? Shh. So you know what that means. I got to bring you back. Yes, for 101. 101. Episode 101 on 101.5. That's a lot of waiting, though. It is. I'm <laughs> pumping them out. We're at 86. Yeah. Got to keep going. Because you do them every Monday, right? I'm trying to. Yeah. That's the goal. I'm trying to stay on top of things. Nice. And it's working really well because, well, you got a wonderful podcast, the JMO podcast. Yeah, the JMO podcast. Uh, it's been uh, six years strong on that one. Six years, man. No sponsors. No sponsors. <laughs> hint, hint. It's no cash flow coming in hint, whatsoever. Hint, hint. No sponsors. Which I, don't, means... I don't even want to tally how much money I've put into that thing. <sighs> well, dude, you're the, ones, you're the reason why it made me I want to keep doing uh podcasting yeah because it looked easy i made it look easy yes that's, that's the reason why <laughs> you're like Psh, i could do that i could do that Ugh. these chumps are doing it and then i look at my ratings i'm like oh yeah this takes forever <laughs> to do it, this. yeah it is a slow burn my friend it is a very slow burn but ladies and gentlemen i'm very happy to have nick i've known nick for what seven years now yeah and uh i met nick in the comedy realm and what was great about nick is when he first started out, he wasn't like your typical open micer getting drunk. He wasn't your typical open micer talking smack. Oh, because that's because you didn't see me the first six months. Oh, okay. I was uh, definitely getting drunk you to get on stage. Drunk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I had to get past that nerves. Oh. The nerves was really hard. It took me about six months to get over that. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I just started to realize like the more you write, the more you want to get on stage. And then that starts to trump that feeling of being nervous of being on right, stage. Right, right, right. So now I tell everybody like all these new comics, I'm like, don't do that. Just get, just get used to it. Yeah. The longer the longer you suppress it with alcohol, the longer it's going to take to get over that fear. Oh god. It's the and worst. the more the the more when you're scared to be on stage, it's just impeding your ability to be funny. Right. So just just jump into it. Right. Well, dude. Well, when I saw you, you were always on point, and you never uh, were drunk. And I saw a lot of potential between you and Saul. And yeah, you guys asked me to be on your podcast, and I'm like, okay, because well, I always always. The type of person, whenever I see a new comic, I don't want to associate with Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really don't. Because they're like, they're so terrible. Not only that, it's just like- <laughs> But they, mostly they, that. <laughs> not only that, it's like they want something from you. Yeah. They always want something from That's you. That's true. And, or, or you give them advice and they give you that yeah, yeah mentality. Look, give mm-hmm. me some advice and yeah, yeah. It's not saying I was jaded. I just didn't. I had my guard up. It's that very makes hard. sense. It's very hard yeah. to have friends in comedy. Because I'm getting to that area, too, right. where like newer comics are coming up to me and like asking for advice. I'm like, this is weird. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. You're still trying to give advice yeah. to your own self. But see, I contribute to being where I am right now is actually listening to everybody. Right. Anybody who had any kind of advice, I'd take that in. And I'd always watch. I'm like, okay, what is working for them? Like, what do they do? Like, Well, even with the newer comics, I still listen to their advice. I yeah. still listen to them because... If someone well, sees, you listen to me, and I'm only seven years in. Doesn't matter, man. What's great <laughs> is because 
you you're watching something that I can't see. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that. They they don't understand when you're doing comedy, you you got to let go of the ego. Mm-hmm. So if someone goes, "Hey man, I got a tag for you," or "Hey man, uh this is why you look so good on stage because of this." Yeah. Oh, uh, this is why it's working. And a lot of older comics don't want to even care about listening to that. Yeah. And you do and you give great advice. And like I said, Nick is Nick is a wonderful human being too. He works hard and he's a great person. And oh, thank you. Yeah, man. No, I mean that, dude. We worked together. We were at Fort Bragg together. Well, that was an amazing show, right? It was a lot of fun. Santa Rosa was great. Santa Rosa. Yeah, we had great. a little run. Yeah, I talked about it in the last episode. Nice. <laughs> You're like, well, let's not talk about it again. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk about your experience. <laughs> My experience. Well, I'll just say it was fantastic. It was absolutely amazing. It so, was amazing. So if you listen to the other podcast, the previous episode, then you can continue this episode. You'll understand that Nick and I work together and he crushed that for Brad. Yeah, we work together often. We do. We work well together. We work really well. Not only that is, um, I think what really attracted me to you with our friendship is we have a love for voices. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Impressions, voices. The first year of doing comedy, that's what I did was I did impressions. That's all I did too. Yeah. Here's my impression of Shaggy taking a... Yeah. A whiz. Like a wow scoob. Like a wow scoob. <laughs> but <laughs> it, it got to the point where I was like, I was tired of, tired of trying to come up with material to go with the voice. Right. And then the more I wrote other stuff, I was like, oh, well, I like this stuff. And maybe I'll just end with jokes. And right. then it started, it was like a slow fadeaway. Well, you can only do so much with impressions. Mm-hmm. Cause I, uh, uh, Frank Caliendo, he, all he does is yeah. impressions. And, and it's, I because uh, I did, uh, I'm the house photographer for Punchline Sacramento. Oh, yeah, so I get to see all these people, and I got to see Frank Caliendo. Very small, by the way. Is he? He really? is really short. Is he tiny? He yes. looks like a big dude. He's like five seven. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love his. You know, I, I that's I'm, his opening joke too. Uh, how tiny he is. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I love his uh, uh, John Madden impression. Oh, so he, good. He does a great John Madden. But for me, I didn't want to be that comic that goes. Here's my impression of insert celebrity name ordering at the drive through. Yeah, exactly. Or, or buying clothes or, or or something like that. And for some people for the long time people always said to me, "Mike, you're an impressionist." And I'm like, "I'm not oh, an impressionist." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. I remember you used to get mad when people did Arnold. <laughs> that mad at me? <laughs> no, you used to get upset like, "Oh, they're doing an Arnold Cause I impersonation." Arnold and I yeah, cuz Arnold and Stallone can't yeah. do those anymore. Arnold because they're outplaying. Uh, walking, you can't do those three anymore. Because I know man, that's what I, I used to do. Walking all the time. I people know. used to request me do walking. Right. Yeah. I, people used to request. <laughs> I used to have this old bit of here's my impression of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone in the bathroom. Oh my gosh. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> no, <laughs> say it ain't so. <laughs> I'm almost there. <laughs> Uh, I'm coming out now. You got paper. <laughs> hey, yo, so I was like a soft one or what? You doing that one? You go, come on, come on. Say, I can't <laughs> even do the impression anymore. It's been, <laughs> it's been years. It's, you got to listen to it for a little bit. You know what I mean? And then get it down. Like, come on. Come what on. Are, what are you doing? Here. You're taking too long. Here. That's all I can do. I now. have to go. Here. That's come on. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been doing uh, photography? Uh, about the same amount of time I've been doing comedy. Yeah, yeah. What so got about you into photography, uh, uh, comedy. Oh, com- so you <laughs> yeah. learned at the exact same time? Yeah, because I didn't want to work in my job anymore. Nice. And so I was like, I'm, I don't want to do a nine to five. So you just decided to become a photographer as soon as you started. Doing yeah, because I mean, I'd always taken pictures. Dude, I thought I'd you were doing photos. that before stand up. No. Mm-mm. Really? I. Um, well, yeah, I'd always taken pictures uh, ever since I was a kid. Uh-huh. You know, my mom always had a uh, she had a D- DSLR, and I used to take pictures and be like, "This is really cool." And I try to like do like really cool pictures. You know what I mean? Right. And then once Instagram came along, I was like, oh, "I'm an Instagram photographer," <laughs> and that started to go into like, "Oh, I need to make like cool shots. Right. I want to do like a daily thing or like a weekly thing." Wow. And then eventually, I was like, "Man, I don't," because I used to work for Coca Cola. I worked for Coca Cola for about seven years, right? And I literally broke my back. How did you break? Your I back? injured my back. I injured it pretty good. I uh, I have slipped discs. Oh, and I was like, I don't want to work here anymore. Right. I'm. I'm. That's a back breaking job. I'm tearing. I'm tearing my body up. Right. So I was like, um, uh, I need to figure out what I can do. Like I know I have skills. 
I, I know I could do art. I know I could do photography. Uh-huh. And um, um, my uh, uh, Danelle bought me a, a, a DSLR. Oh, she okay. bought me my first camera. And then I just went out every day, took pictures, went on YouTube, looked at tutorials, Dude, practiced, I never, and kept going. I never knew that. Cause and it was every day. I think what, what uh, attracted me to start doing headshots with you is when I saw pictures of Mikey Winfield. Yeah. Mikey Winfield was one of your first customers, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, this style is amazing. And as soon as I saw that, I immediately contacted you. And then that's when the relationship started because you took, not only did you take great pictures, you're just such a cool person to hang out with that you made it more fun yeah. to take pictures with. Yeah. And, I mean, because you just keep it silly, keep the environment silly. Right. You know what I mean? But, but you got a good, you got a, a, a certain style to your photography that just makes it pop more than just regular photography. I don't know what it is, but your style. I I spent a lot of time um, practicing lighting. Okay. And watching tutorials on lighting and learning about every situation that I could be in. Okay. Literally every situation. Like, okay, so it's sunny outside. It's noon, high noon. Worst time you want to take pictures. What do you do? You know what I mean? Right. So it was like I wanted to be ready for every kind of situation depending on what time people were available. Right. And so getting to know your lighting and then everything around that is going to, you're going to set yourself up to be able to make amazing images. Wow. Well, folks, if you, Emma Mikers, if you ever go to Sacramento punchline and you're walking before you even go in to the comedy club, as soon as you walk around the area and you see all those wonderful pictures of all these headliners, it's all Nick Larson's photography. It's absolutely amazing. It's such a huge honor. Dude, it's so awesome to see. Right? Yeah, my favorite thing about it is is when I'm walking the hallway and people are looking at it and they're talking about the pictures and I just walk by. What do, what do they say? They're just talking about how cool they are, like who, who the people are, you know uh-huh. what I mean? And we're like, oh, these are really nice, you know? And I just walk by. I don't say anything, you know? What I'm was like, your... I don't want to be like, these are my pictures. You I should. did these. You nah, should. I don't want it. To... You, should have, you should hold your camera yeah. and take a picture. <laughs> you know, I, I want a picture. Of, I, like, I'm going to try to convince them to put a picture up of me. Of you yeah. holding the camera? Yeah, or? yeah. Yeah, you yeah. should. That'd be cool. <laughs> well, it, put me on the wall. Dude, you, why not, man? You've made, I, I think my favorite one is uh, Godfrey's. Godfrey's yeah, cause he, really I pops. love the silly poses. I, li- I love when I don't have to guide them. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like he was like all over the place. Like I, That's why I loved working with Mikey Winfield. Right. I didn't have to tell him anything. Right. Like as soon as he heard the shutter, he was on to the next pose, next pose, next pose. Nice. And I was like, this is so cool. And I got great pictures. Dude, phenomenal pictures. You know what really helped, though, is um, when I was a kid, I used to mo- uh, model. And then when I became a teenager, I tried to do it again. And I met a photographer. And he showed me a lot about uh, photography. Uh-huh. And then from there, he was like, I'm, I'm, I, I hate editing. Right. Like, um, would you edit? You want to edit the photos? And so I started editing his model photos. Like when he took pictures of, like, the, the girls and stuff. And right. I would, like, practice and practice and try to get like skin smoothing and all that stuff down. And this one, I was like 18. Wow. So I've been using Photoshop since I was 18 years old. So when it comes to like when I met you, I was able to do like fake backgrounds and stuff like that. Dude, I you know? love the fake backgrounds. Yeah. I love uh, that. So that, that, Im- I mean, that's what attracted the me. image of you in the, in the suit with the car behind Jason you. Jason Statham. And you can't tell that it's fake, right? No, it, it looks It looks great. amazing. And it I'm like so great. proud of that picture. It looks so cool. I yeah, Jason, that's what we were it's going Jason for. Jason Statham. <laughs> We Boy. took that in the park. Yeah. It was in a park. And I was like, this is the right lighting for right. what I want the background to look like. Right. I knew where, like, I wanted the, the light to hit you and then the look for, at the background that I wanted. Like, okay, this, so this matches. Because that's really important is to match the lighting in the background and also to uh, match the colors. And I have, like, certain tricks Dude, that, you're I an artist, man. that I will not divulge. What's that? <laughs> Those are tricks that I will not divulge. Don't. Because that will separate Nick Larson photography from everyone else. So, yeah, man, uh, doing stuff like that. And uh, Mikey Owens posts this uh, this one I did for him because he wanted a picture of, uh, like, him, like, looking up to the sky. And, like, he's, like, drawing power from, like, all the uh, the old comics. Uh-huh. And so I, I have a picture of, like, lightning coming down. Oh, and, like, cool. like, pictures of, like, Bernie Mac and, and uh, Pryor and stuff like that, that in the sky. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Is, is it on your? And he loves it. Where's it at? It's on his it? page. I, it's probably on mine too, but it's definitely on his page. Okay. So go to um, what is it? Is it Mike? Just Mikey Winfield? I think so. On Instagram, Big Teeth, right? Is it Big Teeth? I okay. think that's his website. Okay. But I think Big, it's Big Ass Teeth dot com. <laughs> I think it's Mikey Winfield. <laughs> it's both. No, he has both of them. Oh, he does. He, I think he has three. 
three of them. Okay. Is step stepman. Right. Dot com. Well, let's promote about you. Yeah, Don't yeah. Worry about Mikey. We're here to promote. <laughs> but Mike. I love Mikey though. I know Mikey's great. Like you guys, yeah, you guys were my first customers. Yeah, so. man. And that just started that momentum, and you've been yeah, running yeah. since, man. And it's dude. When I think about it, I'm like, how much money has Mike invested in me? <laughs> <laughs> a lot because it's worth it man yeah. it's worth it. i love it it's you, videos dude, photography it's, it's well you know i don't think about wasting money away because yeah. you work hard and uh, whatever i asked uh you you provide yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. timeline i think that's you work fast but you work accurate too yeah so you work hard and you deliver great production value as well mm -hmm. so i don't i don't figure Throwing money man, away. I'm trying, man. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah. And then sometimes I get behind on things, and I'm like, just, just when is your like definitive date? When do you need it by? Right, right. And I'll be like, okay, I'll make time and I'll put it in. Right. Because I mean, Daddy's getting busy these days. It's good, man. <laughs> Can you talk about uh, your worst photography moment? My worst photography moment. Um, like a hell gig. Like you wanted to quit photography that day and. Said, you know what? I'm done. I, why am I doing this? I don't think I've had one. Never. No. What about comedy? I don't think I've had one of those never either. Had a bad, no. Never I, had for a the bad most set. part, I, I kind of keep a couple, as positive as I can because I don't want to, you know, go into a spiral. You mm. know what I mean? So I try to see like the positive and everything. So you never had a bad set, not because of you, just everyone. I've had bad sets. Okay. So what was But your... that's like, it goes from having the bad set to, okay, I need to get back on stage and fix this. Okay. So what you was know? your bad set in comedy that made you say i either gotta quit or i gotta move forward okay so i'm not gonna count any of like because obviously like the first three four years you're gonna have a lot of bombs because right. you're working out your material mm -hmm. uh, it might have been um maybe last year when i did uh comedy comedy oakland okay and i did the um i did the competition okay because it's like a, it's like <clears throat> a tier like you do four minutes and you advance if you advance to the semis then you do another four and then the finals, you do another four. Right. I did. I I I started strong. I bombed for three minutes, and then I did okay. I ended decent, but for me, that's that's a bomb. Like, right. I didn't. So I didn't get him for. Hit? Nah. Never. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Not. I mean, I'd have to sit and think about it, but nothing that. See. If it was a hell gig, I would. It would have immediately popped in my right, head, of but nothing like that pops in wow. my head. Wow. Wow. You are on a streak. Well, I've definitely had keep, some weird shows, keep, okay, so but nothing like hellish where like I didn't want to be there. What's one of the weird? Well, not every comic always wants to be there. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just something that's completely out of your hands. Like you never had a rowdy crowd that you just could not win over. Or anything no, like because I thrive in that. Okay, that's what I mean. The first two years of doing comedy, I did nothing but bars. Not yeah, no bars until I actually stepped on a stage. You know, right. and that's I. These new comics that start out at like Punchline and stuff and do like the bringer shows. So I'm like, you guys are just spoiling yourself. Right. You're just going to have an unrealistic yeah. idea of what crowds you like. You need you to build calluses. Do you also believe in the comedy gods? The comedy gods? Yeah. I don't know. You I don't believe, believe in... I believe in myself. Okay. You don't pray to the comedy gods <laughs> no, or anything? Don't. No, I don't. The higher being of comedy gods? No. No? Because I mean, when we talk, you know I get kind of philosophical about things right you right. know what i mean i see things this is the perfect format go ahead yeah i see things in kind of kind of differently okay is um that's like another thing is like it's it's cool that you're you're what 13 years in now uh 14 it'd be, it'd be 15 in 15? december yeah and you still take advice from like younger comics right because i feel like i feel like it's weird to like tell like newer comics how i feel like it should be done but it's it's i think it goes with everything when you get to a certain point if you're not still learning, you're not improving. Not gonna grow. You know what I mean? Right. And also teaching helps you improve as well. Right. So me, I like so I, I try to take that in like, yeah, they're asking me for advice. Let me give advice because then I could use it myself. Right. Because when you think about it, then you're like, Oh, I need to implement that too. Like, okay, I'm telling them to do this, but I haven't been doing that myself. But you see something that I don't see. Yeah. That's always I, Well, that's the hard thing too, is you can't see your own your own development. Uh -huh. You're like, you're, there's always an outsider perspective, you know? So if you could get like, that's stupid saying like two minds are better than one. Well, obviously. Yeah. That's why it's important. So important to hang out with other comics because you bounce ideas off of each other right. because they, they're going to think of something that you might not have, you know? So well, now dude, you're I, improving your material just by hanging out with your friend. 
I, I I understand your philosophy and uh, believing in yourself and as you should because you're yeah. you're the only person on stage and but you know what man I'm a firm believer of spirituality uh-huh. and I always pray to the comedy gods <laughs> that's why I'm always nice to newer comics especially right before stage time yeah because you never know the comedy gods they love to play trickery on you oh man and they always, I think that's just called karma <laughs> but that's the comedy gods the comedy gods <laughs> the comedy karma comedy gods are the ones. That will ruin your set or make it better right before stage time. Yeah, like I, I've I've seen this happen before, and I was, uh, and it happened to me once, and I've seen it happen to another comic. Uh, I didn't pray to the comedy gods. I didn't. Now you don't have to like worship them. Yeah, but you have to be uh, in tune with spirituality because it's a spiritual connection when you're on stage performing. Mm-hmm. It is whether you believe it or not. There's this. It's there's a definitely this, a different feeling, a, a right, different experience. It's, it's not like just sitting here at one hundred one point five K hits. Now, K-Hits. K-Hits. Hey, K. All the hits. All the hits with K-Hits on 101.5. We're getting hit. K-Hits. We're getting hits. hits with the K-Hits. <laughs> Only one K, not three. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, I've, uh, it's a spiritual connection when you're connecting with the audience and yourself, and there's no instruments, there's nothing, it's just you and your words and your microphone. The, the filling and the microphone. So obviously, and I, my dad was a preacher, so he always had this spiritual connection with the audience and himself, and I've always adapted that. So even before when you're performing, you still got to apply that nature of love yeah. and, and connectivity. And I didn't do that one time. I was like, I'm going to crush this crowd. I'm going to murder it. And I'm going to, and yeah. didn't do it. Completely yeah. bombed. I don't know. I think uh, that's cool. That's cool that you think that way, but I just I I rely on myself. That's you know what you know you what I mean. To. If that's why also I don't drink anymore before before right. or I, I don't smoke or anything like that. I, I don't smoke in general, anyways, because I I'm just like drunk, that. But I got drunk one time on stage and just absolutely destroyed it. Yeah, but I was like, nope. I can't rely yeah, on Yeah, but see, that. I don't want anything like that to right. be an indicator of what, like a crutch of why I right. did all, like, oh, man, I bombed because I was drinking. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I was like, that's why I'm going to go up stone sober, and if I have a bad set, that's because I did something wrong. Right. You know? Right. And no praying to anybody or comedy gods or anything like that. Like, I, if I didn't have a good set, I just didn't connect with that audience. Right. You know what I mean? Well, I don't I don't say oh, it was all because of the comedy gods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's just a, a way for me to get into that spiritual realm yeah. of performing. And if it's a bad set, it's, yes, I do blame myself. Yeah, I yeah, always yeah. blame myself if it's a bad set because it's up to us to figure out why we didn't connect with Yeah. Them. If it's a great crowd, what do we always say? Man, that crowd was, was amazing. Great. That crowd is great. It's not like, I murdered it because of yeah, me, yeah. Uh-huh. myself, and I. Yeah. At 101.5K, <laughs> <laughs> it was me. All about me. It wasn't like that. We that's a, that's the great thing about you and I is when we fail, we, we blame us. When we do well, we always give props to the crowd. To the crowd, exactly. Right, right. Definitely. Right. So what what advice would you give to younger comics that are listening to us right now about bombing? About bombing? Yeah. Bombing should be um, the reason why you go up again. Okay. Not quitting. Right. You know what I mean? That should be an indicator like I need – I need to kick myself in the butt and do something. Right. What do I need to do? Do I need to write this better? Do I need to del- deliver better? Do I need to work on my delivery? Do I need to work on my engagement with the crowd? What is it? Why did I bomb? Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, I like about- the reason why I bombed at the comedy the the uh, the comedy machine is because I didn't gauge I didn't um, assess the audience mm-hmm. properly. I just went up and I was like, all right, because I have my chunks. Mm-hmm. You know, I have my chunks about Stockton, about living in the ghetto, about relationships, and then about kids, you know? Well, I should have known that nobody was re- going to really get... It was like a highfalutin place, you know? There's like a lot of rich white people. They're not going to get anything about the ghetto. The, uh, so I should have just started ghetto? out... Yeah, exactly. I should have started out with my relationship material, <laughs> right. and I would have advanced. Always mix it up. So that was my fault, right? you know? And what, you again, know what I, like, I like about you and a couple other comics that you hang out with is you guys don't pull any punches. Especially, yeah, you know, Mike, you, yeah, you were up there tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, so, uh, how'd that feel? <laughs> yeah, 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 like you're, you guys don't go, wow, you were great, great set. A lot of, I don't know why comics always say great set after someone bombs. It, I don't know if they're too afraid to be honest. There, uh, there's either, I mean, there's only one of two things. It's either they're too afraid or they're being condescending. Okay, you right, know what I mean. Right. 
You're like, okay. <laughs> great set. Great job. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Especially when that bead of sweat yeah. went down your spine. Yeah. But it is kind of funny when you're watching your friends bomb. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. Yeah. I think it depends if, uh, I think it depends when they're, what's the word I'm looking for? If the audience is just not connected with them and they're trying their best and they're not, and the audience is not hit feeling it yeah then yeah then it's funny but if the i if they come up there being disrespectful drunk or yeah yeah, yeah. If, then you're if like come on man yeah if it's 100 percent their fault they're being disrespectful on stage yeah. then I, I don't think it's funny at all i think it's funny when a comment's dry and they're absolutely best and the audience all you hear is crickets from the audience mm -hmm. for some reason that's funny to a comic but when someone disrespects the stage you're just like oh man i hope you tank big time yeah for sure i hope you do yeah, you don't yeah, deserve yeah. To be that's up a here. big, that's a big thing too. Right, disrespecting the stage. Oh God, it's the worst. It's the absolute worst. And uh, but you don't. That's what's great. You well, always... I I kind of feel like I mean, I want people to be honest with me. Mm -hmm. So why would I not do the same for them? Right. You know, if I if I do bad on stage, you better let me know. Like, hey, that wasn't your best. Right. You know, and that way it could be like, yeah. Exactly. I need to. Okay, what 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 happened there? Let me let me watch because I film every one of my sets. So I'm like, let me watch this and see what I did. Just like football, watch the play. Watch, yeah, watch, watch. the game tape. You watching football? You you big football? Fan? Uh, no. I mean, I follow it on uh, Google, <laughs> <laughs> but I never have time to watch it. You know, man, I got so sick and tired of watching football. I think mm -hmm. it, it all started with uh, uh, Kaepernick taking a kneel. I don't have a problem as a vet. Yeah, I don't have a problem with Kaepernick taking a kneel. I think it's wonderful that he took a kneel. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't like the the NFL focused on yeah, he's yeah, taking yeah. a kneel zoom in on the camera mm -hmm. zoom in zoom in he's taking a kneel yeah look at him taking a kneel he's taking a kneel. they don't understand why he's taking a kneel they yeah don't talk about that side of course not because they don't want to right did you guys did you see about kaepernick uh with um his tryout no you didn't hear about that mm -mm. okay kaepernick had a, a tryout he's been uh but the nfl said that he needs to try out with their receivers at this place, and oh. he had to sign a waiver saying that the, he can't sue the NFL. And he didn't, want, oh, he didn't wow. like that. So you know what he did? He went to a high school, got his own receivers, and, dude, he looked great, man. He's still got a cannon and stuff. And the NFL is berating him about that. Yeah. They're not saying it. They're, they don't want him. Well, to yeah, do. I would do the same thing because I feel like at that point, you're they're, they're trying to set him up for failure. Right. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. It's like in like you see in the movies. Make sure you don't catch the ball. Yeah, exactly. But I like Kaepernick. <laughs> don't catch the ball, boy. We're paying you good money not to catch the ball. <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't know. But That's... this the, I, this is what I learned with with Kaepernick. I you know I was a huge Alex Smith fan, and when Kaepernick took over, I was like, eh, whatever. I'm not a fan of him. But I did like how he he stood up for what was wrong, mm -hmm. and I do like how he's. You know, pushing know your rights and stuff like that. And what's funny about the NFL is that they're giving Kaepernick so much crap. But did you see what happened? Um, I just watched the highlights. Did you see what happened with uh, the Cleveland Browns and Philadelphia or uh, Pittsburgh Steelers? Mm. All of them, all, all of these answers are going to be no. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> just letting you know ahead of time. One of the guys, one of the uh, what's his name? I have it written down. Uh, Miles Garrett. He's one of the defensive guys took the helmet off the quarterback and started beating him with it. What? Yes. Started oh, my beating. gosh. He went full Warriors? He went full Warriors. Crazy. Yes. <laughs> He's like, you're going to take you down. <laughs> Beat him. And he I would say he's, he's on steroids. Okay. <laughs> he got. He's potentially going to be suspended for the rest of the year. Potentially? What do you mean potentially? Exactly. No, he should be banned. You exactly. don't beat someone in the middle of the field. Right. And he might be. He should have been arrested. He's going to be potentially suspended for next year. Potentially, right? I love this. He's got enough money where he could be like, "Hold on, hold on, but hold on." Kaepernick, here's five mil. Right. I'm staying out of jail. <laughs> but Kaepernick taking a knee for social injustice. Exactly. He gets banned and kicked yeah. out, of, and they've been dodging him for three years. Well, what's the guy's name again? Uh, Who's this the guy? guy? The guy, the guy, the guy, the guy that was hitting the um, the quarterback, uh -huh. Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett. Mason Rudolph was the quarterback. Is he white or black? Black. Okay, never mind. <laughs> no, I can't say anything then. 
101.5 Smildly racist I was going to say it was a white dude I was like man see they get away with everything No 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 He he got away with it because He was He wasn't going against the grain with the NFL Kaepernick went against the grain with the NFL Now he went against the grain with America I don't think so Well that's how they're, that's how they're saying it because it was the national anthem You know what I'm saying So that's the whole uproar about it He's like, you don't kneel during the national anthem. <laughs> That's the whole thing. This, you, you, he just went up against. He's taking a kneel. Even though. In this great country. How dare he. Did you know why? I, I looked back. You know why they started having the national anthem? Hmm. Because people were leaving during the games. Or before the games. Really? Yeah, they decided. Before the games, they would have the NFL players in the locker rooms mm-hmm. before the game starts. And then when the game starts, everyone runs out and do their thing. They decided at one point in time to have a national anthem to keep everybody in the captive yeah. audience. So it was okay. a, a, a ruse to keep. They used America yeah. to, to Dang, sell more products. That's, that's cold-blooded. Right. That's awesome, though. It, that's, it's genius. That's a salesman right there. It, it is. Good Look, to... we're going to do the national anthem. They're not going to leave because that would be against America right there. Right. You're just going to hear the national anthem and then leave right after that? No, you got to stay. How dare you leave? You got to stay. You got to see these guys beat the crap out of each other because that's what America stands for. Yeah. I don't know why we always go into that accent when we're talking about America. <laughs> America. I think it suits because when you think of America, you yeah. can't say America with a British accent. You have to say America makes your mind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you also you're Puerto Rican and I'm Mexican, so right. <laughs> that's how we see the world. That's how we look, <laughs> that's how we look at the world, America. Yeah, right. man. Now, now that dude should go to jail. But you don't beat someone with a helmet, especially right, with a helmet. You should get out of rest. That's assault. Yeah, that's assault. That's not like taking. Okay, you could take a punch, but like you're gonna take a helmet to the face, dude. He hit him no. bare right in the uh, top of the dome. Oh my! Like, con- he's got CTE now, probably. Yeah, he's gonna have concussion syndrome. Yeah, wow. Dude, kicked him. Everything. Just get a slap on the wrist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As long as you don't go against the national anthem, boy. That's right. why they make so much money. Yeah, yeah. They got to pay for their medical bills that's, when they're old. That, yeah, that's why. <laughs> that's why I'm not a fan of the NFL. I just started to walk away from. Are you a Niners fan? I am, but I'm not like. Proud. I am too, but I never watch it. But and now like, they're like killing it. Yeah. They're like ten and one right, right yeah. now, right? Yeah, and I'm like, that's cool, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm watching it on on Google and like I'm going doing the play by plays. Yeah, that's but it, are you, you know? excited of them winning? Yeah, I am. Yeah. That's good for them, but I still I don't take time out of my day to watch the, right. watch the games. Right, right. I've also n- not been like a huge like football fan in the first place. Like I played Madden and that was cool, <laughs> but I've always been Can more of a baseball Kaepernick player. Take a meal? In, in, in Madden, in that's like a special code that you have to, <laughs> <laughs> you have to put in. <laughs> but I had always been more play. of like a baseball fan. There you go. I played baseball for 13 years. Oh, so nice. that has always been my sport. What's your, oh, who's your team? Who's my team? Yeah. Giants. Okay. A's. San Francisco, bro. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A's. I love A's. I, but I go for local go to, teams anyways. Dude, we got to go to the Stockton Ports game, man. I've never been. Uh, yeah. When's uh, March? Come out March? Yeah. Have you been to the stadium? Uh, not yet. No? No. So Again, got, man, I'm like so busy. I can't. I don't have time. Make time for local. AAA. I uh, I got free tickets to see the um, the Stockton Kings, so I took Gio to uh, watch the basketball okay. game. Yeah, so that was. I was like, yeah, but we didn't stay the whole time. Right. <laughs> I you was know, like, we'll so be funny. here for an hour and a half, and then go. To be a sports fan, it takes up a lot of your life. Yeah, it does. It does, and then you get so emotional. I wonder what people's heart rates are like after games. <sighs> you know, you get emotional. You get angry. You get. He's, he's, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, how bad is watching s- sports for your health? A oh, horrible. I'm your sure blood pressure goes through the roof. I'm sure it is. Yeah. That's why when I watch baseball, I try to. I only get mad when my my A's are like losing dramatically. I'm like, yeah. Come on. But still, my heart rate's <laughs> going up. It's like. Uh, yeah, I don't know? get that way. I'm just like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I get well, when the, when we were in the World Series, I got uh, yeah, I got pretty hyped. But um, during like the during the uh, during the season, I'm like, eh. I got a friend of mine. He's a huge Cowboy fan. Huge. Oh man, they're so bad this year. He is a huge <laughs> Cowboy fan. It's so he is such a fanatic. That his mom told me I get worried when he's watching television when they're losing. Oh no, he, he throws stuff. <gasps> he flips furniture. He just goes. Completely. No way. And then he gets depressed when they lose. 
Really? He gets 100% depressed. He's oh, like, man. Oh, but then when he's when they're winning, he's all at this high. He's like bipolar yeah. when it comes to sports. He's like all the way up here, and then he drops it down here. Oh, you did. My Cowboys lost. Or, yeah, my Cowboys won. Yeah. Oh, they lost. Yeah. It's like this yo-yo effect. It's like a manic he's, depressive. He is emotionally attached to that team. Jeez. That's yeah. too much, man. It's way I too can't, much. I can never get like that. Now he has a kid. Now he's going to he's gonna do with Make sure he doesn't hold that kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, when he's, when he's right. watching the Cowboys. Gosh, darn it. Oh. <laughs> he spikes the kid. Whoops. Woo. That's not bad. I, I didn't curse. <laughs> You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. I did my best not to curse. Yeah. Right there, I was like, I gotta, keep, I gotta keep it clean. <laughs> yeah, man, I don't know. I I can't uh, get invested like that. Like uh, at the end of the day, it's 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 the world continues. Right. Everything it's, goes on. Right. Even with comedy, if I bomb, I'm like, it's, I don't get depressed. I'm like, damn. Okay, on to the next. Right. Let's do this again. You know what's not like? Good. I don't like a lot of like comedies. They bomb and then they get like all like super like mopey and stuff. I'm like, this all. I used to okay. I used to be I used to because I used to beat myself up tremendously. Yeah. And then you know what's funny? I started watching a lot of uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. You ever heard of him? Who the heck is that? Gary Vaynerchuk is like this uh, guy that's a huge media guru. Uh, he has all these wonderful uh, speeches and stuff. And he says, you know what? Have everyone else focus on the L. Yeah. If you have an L that night, let people talk about that. You just focus on the next W. Yeah. So as soon as you bomb. Move on to the next one. Exactly. Get that W. And when you get that W, work on the next W. You know, just keep, and when you ever get that L, let them, go, let, oh, did you hear about that? Did you hear mm. about Mike bombing? Oh my God. Let them talk about that. You yeah. Know? It took me a long time to get off that. Yeah. You know? You know, when I first met you, you had a, like a really bad reputation of berating the audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, hey, Mike's crazy. <laughs> it's like videos of him like attacking audience members. <laughs> I was experimenting a lot. <laughs> I was going through a pretty dark time in my life as yeah. well. But I was experimenting a lot. And I uh, I like to, if you haven't noticed, cross the line. Yeah. But then I realized, you know what? These are paying audience. Yeah, yeah. And I had to I come in and tell you, like, hey, man, you can't do that. Right, right. I'm going to. But I changed. Yeah. You know, because I, I, I wanted and to. And now every time I watch you, like, when we did that po the, the post, uh -huh. and the lady had their phone out. Uh -huh. And you're like, put your phone away. Put your phone away. I was like, oh, is he going to pop off right now? <laughs> is this going to happen? I get to the, right there, right there. Yeah. You know, I just get to that line because I don't, yeah, I don't want to be that comic that just ruins people's nights Yeah, when they're having a great time and stuff. And, and then I push and push and push. I, I, I think I've learned so much with, by pushing mm -hmm. that I know when to back off Yeah, and I know when to have a good time and stuff. And plus with, with, comedy in your life when you're having uh you know not a good time in your life mm -hmm. when you're angry and you have a lot of dark stuff in your life it shows on stage it, you, you can hide it but you can't hide it yeah you know when you're having a great when your life is killing it and then you're connecting that with stage time then you see oh okay the, it's a symbiotic relationship mm -hmm. your life and stage time is the exact same thing so whatever you're going through with your life whatever you go it shows on stage whether you're Talking about it or not, people can feel it. People can see it. People yeah. know if you're having a good time off stage or not mm. as well. Man, I get that, but I try not to. I know. You know? I know. Like we were talking about earlier, like I find it confusing when people get like frustrated when they're like, they don't have enough time to go up, you know? Right. Like, oh, I didn't know I was going to be next. Right. And then they, their set's all jumbled, you know? I'm like, I'm ready to go. As soon as I leave the house, I'm ready for comedy. I know where I'm going. I know what I'm doing. If I needed to, I could stand up in the middle of a Denny's and start doing my set. You know, if somebody was like, "Hey, do five. and I'm right. like, "All right," because I know I know what I, what I need to do. This is my job, right? You know, I find sometimes you know when you are going through those hard times, sometimes you 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 crush because you need to let out all those emotions. Right. You know, well, I've learned how to do that. Mm -hmm. I think that's what my problem was. Yeah. I didn't you, know, First of all, I didn't. I never had. A, I'm sure. Uh, I never had a mentor. Mm -hmm. Never had anyone guiding me. I never had a, a comedy buddy to help me and guide me and tell me the honest truth about it. Yeah, I was yeah. literally the lone wolf. Yeah. Before I met you, man, I was always like the lone wolf. No one ever saying, "Hey, man, this is what you need to work on." This way, never. Yeah. So I was always trying to figure this out by myself, and even my peers, the class, they never said anything. Yeah. It's always. Even I have a good set or a bad set, never said anything. Yeah, you need you need somebody who's gonna guide Honest you through feedback. it. Yeah, 
that's it. And I always do. And even even at the uh, the uh, Fort Bragg show, you know, right before the show, you had some some yeah. sad some sad news. Yeah. And then I took you aside and was like, "Hey, just you utilize it, yeah. use it." You know, walked out. <laughs> I talked about that the other yeah episode. <laughs> yeah, and then you but yeah you, you killed it. Yeah, it was because. But sometimes you need somebody to be like, "Hey, you know what? Just you're the cut man." Yeah, comedy. <laughs> Come on, Mike, go out swinging. I can't do you it. got it, rock. Come on, rock. Don't be a bum, rock. Don't be a. Oh, dude, we're at forty minutes right now. Good. It's been a very fast, wonderful forty minutes. Yeah, man. And I think before we go, do you want to do it? I think we should do our uh, part three. Part three. Part three. Uh, folks, if you don't know, on uh, the GMO podcast. Oh. Oh, before I lose my train of thought, Go ahead. I do remember a gig now. Okay, I do Fire remember away. a gig. Fire away. It was early on in the career, but I remember somebody uh, as some, as somebody bad. set up a show and it was like in this little studio. It looked really cool, and they 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 did the nines. They got like the curtain and everything like that for the backdrop. Got made a stage and everything. Set out chairs. It probably fit about like forty people, and two people showed up, and they were like older white ladies. And they were like just drinking wine, staring at us. Oh, the Mexican. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like so uncomfortable. How long did you go? I did ten minutes. Oh, that must. And have been the hard. ten minutes, I just yeah, I was just saying wild stuff and making the comics laugh in the back. Right. But it was also like half of them making fun of the situation. You know? How could you not though? How could you not <laughs> call out the situation? <laughs> but it, how's it, everybody doing? It tonight? wasn't too bad because they were still having a decent time. Uh -huh. You know, they were kind of giggling and stuff, and they 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 were kind of part of it too because they realized they're only the only two people in there. You know, right. with all these seats around, empty seats. So they were kind of playing around with it too. So it was just like a very weird situation. Uh -huh. And I, I think that's like it's not like the worst show, but that was definitely like the weirdest show I've ever done. Okay. Not bad. Two, so you two, weren't flawless throughout your whole comedy career. No, yeah. I've never been flawless. <laughs> never been flawless. Not until recently. <laughs> there you go. So uh, in uh, Nick's uh, podcast, whenever I was a guest on there, uh, we always had this bit. And the bit is, uh, I'm a huge fan of wrestling, so I do a really good Macho Man impression. You do a fantastic, yeah. You probably do the best one that I've heard Thank anybody you. do. Thank you. And Nick does a phenomenal Hugh Hauser impression. Yeah, which nobody knows. But it's okay. <laughs> In uh, one of the episodes of your podcast, it was Macho Man at a uh, a bank, right? Yeah. Uh, and Hugh Hauser was the teller. The teller, yeah. Okay. Uh, what was the other one? Do you remember? Man, I think this the second one was... Um, you came in and caught me cheating with your lady. That's right. Yeah, That's with uh, right. with Elizabeth. That's right. <laughs> okay, you ready for the third one? Yeah, you got to set set me up first. Okay, what is let's it? figure out the situation. <clears throat> let's think of since what we've been talking about. Let's have Hugh Hauser be the photographer. Okay. And Macho Man. So is, I'm gonna be taking pictures today. Macho Man is the new comic, and I don't know how to take pictures, and you're trying to tell me how to take pictures. Okay. So here we go. Macho Man and Hugh Hauser. This is going to be a very weird situation. Because <laughs> like, there's like not a whole lot of meat on that one. <laughs> okay, let's find out some more meat. What's the, okay, how about we'll this? Just go, we'll just try to go into it. We'll okay. see where it goes. Okay, we're ready to read the read. Let's see. All right, how are we today? I am ready to take my picture. You look like you are ready. I am excited to take my picture. Picture right about now, yeah. Let me tell you what, those veins are gonna look you like the veins fantastic in, the in these photos. You like the veins, definitely the... very characteristic uh, of you, sir. Uh, so, how long have you been a photographer? I've Mr. been a photographer about seven years seven now. Years. Oh, yeah, seven in heaven. Yes, yeah, how long have you been doing comedy, my I've friend? I've been doing comedy for about uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five days. Five days, I've you say. Five been days. Killing it for five days here, Macho Man. And you're yeah. already getting headshots. Uh -huh. Good for you. Uh -huh. So you are setting yourself up I for the future. I need a business card. I need a website. I need all that. And you are going to help Macho Man. Well, I definitely, I definitely will take your money, but I we'll see bombed. how this goes. I never bombed, ever. Oh, well, uh, now you sound like Roman. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's much of man laughing. <laughs> oh, man. Inside jokes, Inside everybody. Inside joke that only us can understand because that's what much of man does. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Much of man is So great. you are a uh, quote unquote comedian. Uh, uh, not quote unquote at all. I am a comic. I am the headliner. Now let me ask I am you. the man of the hour. Uh, five days in, you are already headlining. Five days in, ready crushing it. I'm already at. Is this a show that you put on yourself? I'm already crushing it. All right, doesn't matter if it's a bringer show or not. I'm here to headline all the time. Yeah. I apologize for all the questions, but you're a very fascinating individual. Thank you very much. Now, now take a picture and give me some advice. Well, before that, yeah. I have a, yeah. a couple more questions. Yeah. <laughs> now, have you been paid for comedy yet? Wait a minute. You get paid for this? That's what I was afraid of. You get paid for comedy? Yes, you do. And I get paid for photography, so I definitely will take your pictures. Okay. All right, this bit's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all sweaty. <laughs> and the veins are popping out. Like, <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> it's really just making fun of new comics. I think that's what it was. <laughs> Everyone that's listening are like, uh, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. But people that are in comedy, you'll understand it. They'll get it. They'll get it. For people that don't understand, like new comics, they they already think they're comedians, but they're kind of just open micers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna leave on that note. <laughs> you got anything to plug, Nick? Uh, just my uh, just my podcast. I think we're doing an hour. Is this until eleven? Or are you gonna go? No, we're about forty. We're forty six minutes. We're good. Is that how long you usually do your podcast? I usually do thirty. Thirty? Yeah. Oh, okay. I usually do hot thirty. Hot. 30. But we're at 46 right now at oh, 101.5. Right. We're going to do uh, 101 minutes. You know what's actually five pretty seconds. impressive? I haven't cursed. I have yeah, not cursed. Yeah, I think I almost did. I almost did, but I didn't, and I really wanted to, and it's so hard not to. Yeah. But I'm doing my best. This, so. this is Casey Kazel. <laughs> you got anything to plug? Uh, I would just plug my uh, my photography. Uh, check me out on Instagram at Nick Larson Photography. Um, I, I have, I have great rates. If you're a comedian, I have different rates for comedians than I do. Rates. And then, um, uh, family part, I do weddings. I do, I do it all. I phenomenal do everything. Phenomenal work, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not just saying that because phenomenal. Nick's, not just saying that Nick's my friend. Nick does phenomenal work. He actually did, uh, my niece's wedding. So it's actually beautiful work and I am excited to see it. So he did, he, he stands by his product. So definitely hit him up. Okay, Nick yeah. Larson Photography. Uh, here's here's the thing about me was I I always try to explain to people like I don't ever want to be um, labeled as one or the other. You know okay. what I mean? Like I don't want somebody to say, "Oh, he takes amazing pictures, but he's not that good on stage." Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Or I don't want like he his... takes crappy pictures, but he's amazing on stage. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. want that. I need it to be the the scale, the balance scale. It well, has dude, to be the your same. Fo- your photography. If I improve in time. comedy, I need to pr- improve in photography right. as well. You right. know. So well, it, it needs shows, to be on man. an even, even keel. It's a good balance. It shows. But yeah. Also, uh, Nick Larson Comedy. If you want to check me out, Nick Larson Comedy on Instagram. Everything else is Nick Larson 85, Facebook, Snapchat, and Twitter. What about your podcast? Podcast is uh, the Joke Me Out podcast. Mm-hmm. It is on iTunes. Look up. If you go to the search, type in JMO podcast, all one word, and you'll find us. There you go, man. Well, uh, you Any gotta... sponsors out there, if you want to sponsor, check, it out, check out some of the episodes. And then maybe you could sponsor us. There you go. You got any? Uh, you got any uh, plans for Thanksgiving? Uh, just um, uh, making din din with the fam. Okay. Uh, I think we're gonna host it at our house for the first time. And um, yeah. Uh, besides that, nothing really. Dude, my mom you? is breaking tradition. Really? I love my mom dearly, but this this woman, she, she we're gonna have we're gonna have steak and lobster. What? Yeah. Steak and lobster. Yes. Does she um, work at a casino? At Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, I'm all out. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing up the sleeve. Nothing up the sleeve. <laughs> Steak and lobster, man. Casino. Uh-huh. They all smells like cigarettes, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, No, she pulls butter out of her right. sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Nick. I want to <clears throat> say thank you again very much for being a part of this show. Thank you for being an awesome friend. Yeah, we're in Sacramento, right? Yes, we are. Man, okay. If anybody's in uh, Rockland on Sunday night, I will be headlining at uh, the Blacktop Comedy. Oh, on nice. December eighth. There you go. And also, I will be at Punchline Sacramento before that, doing a quick guest spot at Punchline. Uh-huh. And uh, I will be on our buddy Chris Tinkle's podcast uh, around like five o'clock. Perfect, man. That's a that's a long day. Perfect. 
Can I continue saying thank you for everything? Of course. Okay. <laughs> I uh, thank you for everything, Nick, and I wish you and your family a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, but before we leave, first of all, folks, if you like this podcast, I need you to subscribe to this podcast. Please tell everyone about me, myself, and I. I'm almost 100 episodes in. We're getting closer, and I want you to subscribe because I need listeners. I have, I don't know if you guys know this, I have 40 people in Spain listening to me, myself, and I. You guys can be 41 if you want. Anyways, Nick, are you ready to go? This yes. Is how, this is how we go. I want. We're going to do a little salsa. We're going to do salsa? Salsa, okay? I need you to start start doing this and just repeat after me, all right? Ready? You don't, don't say ready, but are you ready? Yes. You ready? Okay, here we go. Don't say ready. Salsa! 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 salsa. salsa. All right, folks. Hey! Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and we're out.